Hello, beautiful friends. Uh, my name is Alicia Rose. I am the founder of the Rose Composite, and this is Ask Alicia and Friends uh, recorded versions. We also have a live discussion group, so if you want to join in in the discussion, that is monthly on the third Wednesdays at 6 p.m. Uh, Pacific time. And so you can sign up for that by going to calendly.com slash Rose Composite. Uh, you can also sign up for one-on-one -on -one sessions, um, for, for all, all the things, whether you want a medium session, you want a psychic session, an oracle session, a quantum change session, if you want to talk with your little pets, we do animal communication. And if you are just feeling super called to come and do a session with me and you don't quite know what it's about or where it's going yet, there's also just a catch-all called Mix and Match. Um, so definitely sign up for that there and we can kind of see where spirit takes us, which is always probably my favorite. Um, it is my favorite. It is. Okay, so today we are working on being more direct with our communication, right? <laughs> um, and just like the last kind of announcement I wanted to remind everybody, um, roseco.co is the general website. And if you go there, you can sign up for our, the email list. And I know we get so many freaking emails already, but especially this time of year, it's so, um, I, I think it's important, right? So you do you, but it's so important to sign up this time of year because uh, we're getting close to the, the holiday season. And this is when we give a lot of giveaways away. So if you want free sessions, if you want referrals for your friends, anything like that you have to be on the email list that's the only way you'll get this information unless you run into me at the grocery store or something <laughs> so please 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 sign up we're also doing some cool events so you'll see where i'm at in person if you're in the portland oregon area um and i travel a little bit so um that's always how to to know how to find me in person and um yeah it, it's fun we we don't send out too many emails so um, they're all very purposeful and you can kind of see where I am and what we're doing. So, um, this session, uh, we are, we've been doing uh, a five series session of me just talking with spirits that hang around me. So you can kind of get a better idea of the type of work that I do and the type of things that I'm hearing. Um, there's certainly some nestled in lessons of, of how you can do this better if you're working on your own intuition or communication skills. Um, and so today we are talking with my great grandmother. Um, lovingly, I was called her Grandma Benson um, because she was, uh, you know, my, I had another grandma in between, right? <laughs> and so my other grandma was Gaga, like way before Lady Gaga came out, but uh, she's super great. And then um, because then this one was Grandma Benson, right? Um, and uh, so already, like, she's come in, she is here to talk. Um, she does want me to tell you guys, like, a little bit about what's going on lately. Um, so I brought out my Let It Snow pillow. Uh, I woke up this morning, and it was actually the first snow of the year. I'm so excited. I love, love, love this time of year when everything kind of starts to quiet down. It um, tends to be, like, a lot easier to hear um, messages coming through because there's there's not as much activity. And so it, it's akin to a lot of times when people are starting to awaken to, to their understandings and, and to hearing and seeing and, and whatnot. Um, so often between the hours of like 2 and 4 a.m. Or, or late at night, you know, when everything's quiet, they'll kind of like wake up and oh, a lot of people try and like explain it like, oh, I was dreaming. Um, and uh, that we, we hear things more strongly when everything else is quiet, right? So during the winter time, when, when uh, everything else is kind of slowed down, you can hear it more strongly. There's also something so magical about the snow, right? It is a form of water, and so much communication moves through water. And so when it's snowing out, um, you almost have this amplified knowingness because the water is actually communicating these messages through us through different uh, uh, through the medium of water you know um, so that's so exciting and uh, thank you for that let me grab a quick sip 
Mm. I love this. I just got this Dolly Parton cup. I will always love you. I'm really into it. And I also am digging, I got a peppermint mocha creamer. Oh my God, so tasty. So let's uh, just kind of show you this beautiful crystal and we'll kind of start to connect in. Um, my grandma, she's really wanting you all to understand about self-love. And this crystal is like such a good example of that. Let me see if I can kind of get it in the light better. Um, and so it's actually a rose quartz sphere inside of a, a resin and you can kind of see there's sparkly underneath. Um, an artist named Natalie made this and, and she's so wonderful. If you want to check out her work, I can send you the link. Um, Natalie Stifferman. Stifferman. And so, yeah, we're just going to start channeling. A lot of the messages that are coming through are around self-love and, and loving yourself for exactly who you are. Um, I'm certainly someone who has kind of a unique path, <laughs> and it took me a while to appreciate and um, really lean in to what it was that I, I was doing. You know, for so long, I really um, covered up a lot of my skills. I covered up a lot of... Um, uh, and it, it's more than just my skills, right? Because this is such a part of my identity, um, being an oracle and being able to talk with other spirits and having this broader awareness. And, and so in that shame, we tend to hide things, right? And the story my grandma wants to talk about, uh, she, uh, and I'm, I'm not always good at timelines, but I want to say I was around six when she passed away. And um, I, she was, uh, she had lupus, and so she was very, um, not not that she was ve very sick, but she had a hard time moving. And, and in her um, later years, she ended up moving in with my, uh, with my grandma Gaga, and she lived in in the living room. They set up a hospital bed, and she had help come in and. Um, yeah, so we would go over and, and we'd just like hang out. And um, I I was so into my grandma Benson. I would like, and I was a kid, right? So I'd cuddle up, I'd get in bed with her and we'd watch TV and talk about all kinds of things. And um, I, I was always a real big fan. Um, and, and she's mentioning too, I know in one of the previous videos, I, I talked about how I was initially supposed to come in um, like higher up on our ancestry train. And, and so, uh, yeah, she's saying I was supposed to be her daughter. And so part of the reason we were so close is because, um, because we really truly were, you know, had, had a closer soul relationship. And, uh, and she's actually saying, yeah, that's really interesting. She's saying on multiple occasions, I had tried to come into the, the lineage and, um, there was so much hurt and so much brokenness that I really wasn't um, accepted uh, quite strongly. And, and so part of that too, remember, like in our stories are where um, so many, you know, whatever kind of has been, has been challenging to work through in the past is oftentimes where our greatest gifts are. Um, our greatest gifts are in the shadows and in, in the difficulties and in, in, in the prosperity that we have developed through um, through these challenges. And, and so she's talking now to um, because I had these difficulties of being accepted into the ancestral, into the family line, um, that there is like now that I'm here, it has such like a broad expansion in that uh, on that soul level growth because she wants you to know if you're watching this it's probably true for you uh, on that soul level impact um, there are um, it's very possible that you're breaking generational patterns and generational uh, um, hurts and things that need to be healed. And, and that is so true in, in this time. This is happening more often than anything else um, or any other time in our recent history. Uh, we are really truly developing in a way where uh, a lot of these past patterns are, are being dissolved um, and will no longer move forward, right? So um, as a collective, as a whole, there is so much of this breaking off and melting away. 
And so part of the understanding, part of the lesson there is to really, uh, you know, if it's going away, let it go, release it, get rid of it. Cause that is not for you. That's not serving you. That is not your stuff. That's not yours to deal with <laughs> and let it go. Let it leave. Right. Let it snow. <laughs> Um, so the story she wa wants to remind us of uh, is hopefully also going to help you in your own um, development of these skills, right? Because we all have these skills, we all have these senses, and it's just about getting better at them, right? So um, you can kind of think of it like smelling or learning to walk or swimming, right? We're all capable of these things. Um, and we just need to, I should say, most of us are capable of these things. It's a rare exception. Uh, uh, and when you are wanting to develop this more, it's about um, practicing, right? Practice is so important. The more that you do it, the better you'll get at it, right? You can't learn to walk without expecting to stumble a little bit when you're getting started. And um, she also, she wants me to tell you about my earrings. I love this so much. I just got these yesterday um, and they have snakes on them <laughs> and they're really beautiful. Um, but she's talking too about this big theme uh, because snakes often are representative of water as well. They have a lot to do with the feminine of f fertility. Uh, both snakes and water uh, have these in common. And, and she's wanting to speak of like this new season that we're birthing and like a broader season right now so if you're into all the astrology stuff if you're into um uh there's so many different versions that are talking about this time in history we're right between 11 11 2022 and 12 12 2022 and and there we had eclipse season amidst this um, there were so many planets in retrograde over the last you know six months or so and there is such a big shift that it is occurring and is continuing to come to fruition. Um, so it's really, really valuable for you to take this time to make those changes. It is going to be easier to change now than any other time in, um, you know, the, the next hundred years. It, it, um, now is the time to really set up that foundation to shift into who uh, you want to be 10 years from now because it will it will just be easier to do it now than another time. So if you're thinking about things, if you're feeling those nudges, um, you're having those thoughts for a reason, you're having those desires for a reason, and now is the time. Now is the time to act. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> um, so follow those intuitive insights. And, and I do want you to know they're so subtle most of the time. They're so subtle because we hear things like, oh, it would be a good idea to do this, right? Nothing is, um, and, and this will really be the significant difference, right? Um, no, nothing about our intuitive insights comes through like super urgent. You have to do this right now. The world is ending. You will never succeed again. Like all of that is like ego-based fear stuff. So if you're ever feeling like, um, like you have to do something or else, uh, or else, right? That's, that's not for you. Um, what you want to listen to are, are kind of the, these soft rumblings and, and there will be, I want you to understand, um, there's like different types of urgencies, right? Because sometimes there are like little doors and windows open. So you have to do them in right timing. Um, and, and all I mean by that is, is that if you um, feel like you're supposed to like go to the grocery store right now because you need eggs, go do it, right? A lot of times if you're having things like that, it's really about getting to the grocery store when someone else is there and then you're going to meet them and then maybe you talk briefly and you exchange cards and you end up collaborating on this beautiful project in the future, right? Um, so, so often... Um, if we kind of have these weird things that we're not really sure that seem very um, unimportant, uh, it's probably just like one of those breadcrumbs to like get you where you're supposed to be so that the important thing can come in, right? So remember that there's kind of those little leading lines sometimes. There's those breadcrumbs sometimes. 
And what else? Okay, so I keep, yeah, so we're, we're flowing, we're flowing. Grandma Benson is coming through and loving life. And um, she's really um, wanting everyone on this call to understand that, like, you are here, you are hearing this, because it's meant to be. And if you are ever just following what lights you up, following what you love, following your joy, following what you desire, uh, you will always be right where you're supposed to be at that moment in time. And there's this idea of shifting in the quantum realm where the more that you uh, just feel and act as if you already have all these things existing, that's what allows them to show up in your external world, right? As above, so below. Everything is internal on, on some degree, right? Mm. So my grandma dies, my grandma Benson dies. And um, I, again, I'm probably like around six years old. And uh, I, you know, my, I'm a six-year-old, so I'm, I get sent to bed because six-year-olds go to bed earlier than adults. <laughs> and I remember falling asleep and um, I was, and do know a lot of times like you are in a dreamlike unconscious state when um, these beings show up and then they it's almost like they wake you up, right? They're like, hey, I'm here. I'm ready to visit. Let's have a chat. Time for you to wake up. <laughs> so I remember dreaming about uh, my grandma coming to town. My grandma was visiting, and um, w which is so funny. So my grandma, before she moved in, uh, my, my great-grandmother, before she moved in with my grandmother, um, because she was ill and, and dying, um, she lived in a, a neighboring, uh, like a neighboring suburb. She lived in Milwaukee, which isn't far. And so, you know, she lived maybe 15, 20 minutes away from us. And so there was no time in my life where my grandmother would ever be coming into town to visit, right? And that's what's so fun about this, because I want you to start to understand that the stories you're telling yourself are very true and they're under this light of, of how your own ego mind can make sense of it, right? So my grandmother is literally coming to visit me from the other realms and in my dreamlike state, I'm telling myself that grandma's coming to visit from out of town, right? <laughs> <laughs> and, and that only makes sense in the understanding that I live in a physical world and she is visiting from somewhere else, right? Uh, so, so remember to really like lean into these stories because they are always true on some level, but they're the, this interpretation, this symbolized um message right because my grandma doesn't live in another town she is on the other side at this point but she's still coming in for a visit right <laughs> and um so then immediately we're at her old house we're at her house where she lived in milwaukee and um she had it was i, ca I can't remember exactly what style of architecture i want to say it was that mid-century modern and she had um one of those walls where it was like the glass cubes where like the sunlight would come through, but you couldn't fully see through it. And um, I always really liked her house, but she smoked a ton. It was very uh, hard to breathe in there. So we would sit on the patio a lot. <laughs> and, um, and she's so funny. She goes, no, that was just your mom that thought that. And she's kind of... Um, I, yeah, I guess kind of given a dig on my mom, I would say, <laughs> um, because my uh, my mom really uh, to this day does not like cigarette smoke. She uh, and she's very very vocal about it. Um, and so yeah, my grandma Benson saying like she kind of 
uh, yeah, kind of took offense to that. And, and she's also recognizing like there, there's these like timelines, right? Where like when my great grandmother was um, like, like smoking just had a different connotation, right? Uh, it's before smoking came, was known as, you know, so bad for your health and all this. So um, certainly, certainly a different view. Uh, but yeah, my, my great grandma, she smoked for oh, as long as I knew. And, um, so I remember waking up and my grandma's talking to me and she's telling me this guy and, and she very specifically had directions for me. She was giving me directions on what I was supposed to do in this life. Um, and she was saying, because I can't tell you in person anymore, I have to tell you in this form. And. Um, I'm going to write some of this down because I, uh, and, and you'll see me do this if you're ever in a session, um, things come through very quickly. So, um, you know, I can, I can download and channel information much more quickly than I can verbalize. It. <laughs> um, so yeah, she's talking about having directions for me very specifically. Um, that you're supposed to be the Oracle. You're supposed to tell people about their futures. And you're supposed to guide them on a better path because, because they don't know any better. She says they forgot. They forgot. And, and uh, this is so accurate. When, when you think of our history already, like pretty consistently, we're coming through with, with new information, right? Or like, oh, you know, we didn't have it quite right before, or we're changing our definition, all kinds of things like this. Um, and I, I think one of like the easiest examples to think of is, is on like the scientific front. They have all the, the families and genuses and, and such with like the scientific names of, of species. And for a long time, they thought there were just six types of, I, I want to say they're called kingdoms, six kingdoms of species. And now they're up to nine already but like if you just kind of think about it very logically this is just a a, a humanistic um, setup for what we believe to know to date right and so if you think that in some way you know all and i'm just going to go with this example you know all the types of species out there does that not sound a little like short-sighted to say that I know every single species that exists, right? Well, that just doesn't make sense. We don't even have access to the bottom of the ocean. There's certainly species down there. It doesn't make sense to say that. Like nothing lives down there. I know that fully and nothing will ever live down there, right? It just doesn't line up from a very logical perspective, right? So what you kind of want to start doing is, is saying, this is my current understanding, and I'm going to build upon that understanding, knowing that there's things I don't know, right? That I think that is one of the most powerful statements, is to know that you don't know everything, because that allows you to learn and to explore and to develop new knowledge and to continue learning as you go throughout your time in this body. And um, yeah, and so my grandma, she's really talking so, uh, so, so importantly to um, be coming into that neutral state because uh, what's going to happen on, on kind of the psychic level is that if you believe you know everything, your system is going to shut down naturally. You know, you have this retaliation. Uh, Reticulating, activating, reticular activating system, RAS, RAS, you'll hear me call it a lot. Um, and your RAS is basically this filter that says, based on your conscious mind, um, how you interpret things, right? What you're aware of, what you see. And so a really good uh, way to think this is if you just bought a new car, you just bought a new red Jeep, all of a sudden you probably see red Jeeps everywhere. It's not that all of a sudden everybody else went out and bought a new red Jeep. It's that all of a sudden you are more aware of red Jeeps and you are paying more attention to them, right? So what we want to do here is to focus our awareness on what we want to see more, right? So if you're wanting to develop your own skills, 
you want to uh, see more opportunities that allow you to develop these skills, right? So you might call in a guide or you might um, start, uh, basically you just want to like open that awareness so that you can be um, more perceptive to them as they occur because all this stuff is already happening. It's simply about heightening your awareness to what you want to see more, right? It goes back to that saying, uh, you know, so many people say like, what's the worst that could happen? And you really want to start asking yourself, what's the best that can happen? If you show up with just that slight difference in your attitude, all of a sudden, all these really good things are going to happen to you. But if you're always over there like, oh, what's the worst that can happen? Well, guess what? Something bad is probably going to happen. Um, or something worse than the best, right? And so um, I want you all to really start focusing on how can this get better? How can things go more well for me? And then when they do go well, just love that and celebrate that because because that uh, moment of gratitude is what lines into your body and says, yes, I like this. Please may I have more. I am so grateful for this. I'm loving this. This is on track. And it, it's like a it's a somatic response to saying to your own brain, yes, I want to recognize this more. I want to have more awareness of things like this. I want to have these feelings more. And I'm so grateful and I love this, right? And, um, okay, I got off track there a little bit. So, uh, talking about the rest, talking about what we're focusing on. Um, yes. So, um, you want to embody this energy of knowing that you don't know everything. And, and, and in that, that's what opens your awareness to having, um, having more awareness of the things you don't know, right? Because then you can say, okay, I, I'm observing something and I want to better understand that, right? And so I want you to pretend like you are a kid and you've never seen a squirrel before, right? Kids are so good at this. Every single thing a kid sees is for the first time is so cool. It's so interesting. They love it so much. And they're like, oh my God, that's a squirrel. Um, but if you ask me, I'm like, yeah, I know what a squirrel is. Squirrels are squirrels, right? How cool. Love them, but they're not like shockingly surprising anymore because I've seen them enough. Um, but also, okay, so I know why this came through. Grandma Benson's always like giving me, she's given me the story. <laughs> and um, I, uh, so I moved uh, several states away into a very different environment, much more of like a high desert environment. And the squirrels were different. And I remember when, and this was years ago, but I remember the first time I saw the squirrels, like I'm used to like the brown squirrels with like the little soft ears. And these ones were gray squirrels and they had pointy ears. And I remember the ears and I was like, what? These squirrels are so whack. What's up with it? And now that the squirrels were whack, but I was just like so um, enthralled in them. Because I knew they were squirrels, but I was like, these squirrels are very different squirrels. And the reason this is important is when you start to open up your awareness, um, you're always going to try, and this is what that RAS does. Your RAS always tries to explain everything, right? So in your mind, it, it, it's basically trying to put things in buckets of explanations, right? Um, and so in this squirrel example, my brain goes, okay, that's an animal. I know that's an animal because it looks and acts like an animal. Okay, that's a squirrel. I know it's a squirrel because it does that. And then it's like, what is all this new information? It's not the same color. It doesn't have the same ears. Its tail is different. Oh my God, can it run up trees more? I don't know. What? And it gets really exciting because what is happening is, is this is how we learn. And you want to do that enough again and again and again um, because that's when you have better understandings. And uh, so I want to like blow this example out, right? So not only did this happen when I was a kid and my grandma's coming to town and she's showing up in my room without a body in a very different 
um, very different form, very different type of awareness, different types of communication. My Raz, even at that time, is still able to say, this is my grandma. I know this is my grandma. I don't know why she looks like this or why I'm hearing her this way or why she's talking to me in stories and feelings and whatnot, right? So we really want to like start layering on. And the reason I, I want you to understand this is that like then all of a sudden, once we, because what's probably going to happen is you're, you're going to learn in a series of events, a series of, of experiences. And so more often than not, someone who is close to you, someone who um, relates to you, someone you feel safe with in some way, you're going to have these encounters with more easily because you are already aware of them in, in some dynamic, right? Um, so what can happen is now that I've learned that my grandma comes through uh, as a different, um, and it's almost like a hazy energy, almost like, uh, when it's really hot and you like look near the pavement and you can see like the waves of heat and you can still see through, um, to whatever is behind it, but it has that distorted look to it. For me, that's how I see a lot of spirits. Um, and, and so it, it's not that I'm actually like seeing her body and her face like she looked here in humanity. I'm seeing um, a hazy apparition um, and feeling like that feels like my grandma's energy, right? And so once you're able to do that, now the next time I see that hazy apparition, I'm like, oh, okay. This is some form of energy, some type of um, being that's coming through. Check. I know that. And then I'm like, okay, who do they feel like? Who do I think this is? And so what's really important is to understand that, that once you have this base level uh, of understanding about kind of what you're looking for, what type of being, what type of energy, um, and what type of experience, all of a sudden spirits that I don't actually know, I haven't had experiences with before, new spirits are coming through and talking to me, right? Because it, it's this, uh, you know, you're constantly adding on, you're constantly developing and add, adding on um, to your skills and abilities in, in learning. Um, because we do, we live in, in a, a space where time exists, right? we only learn in time. It's kind of like you learn to walk and then you learn to run. And, and you can even say, I learned to crawl, walk, then run, right? We are not just like popping out one day and being like, okay, let me run a marathon. That's just not how it works, right? At least not right now in this environment. Um, and do know that that quantum change exists and that you, you can have those changes, but more often than not, it takes uh, a lot of, uh, and I'm not going to say a lot of leg work, but um, you you have this stuff kind of marinating for a long time before you have that huge jump up, right? It's not, um, you know, people talk about those overnight changes all the time, and those do occur, but a lot of times we're building our energy more subtly, and then uh, it, it manifests in our outworld world very quickly. Um, so that's, you know, another important point from grandma, right? So remember that this stuff is, you know, even if you're just watching this video, wherever you are on your own timeline, you came into this to see this, to experience this, because at some level, you are working towards these things. This information is helpful to you in some way, whether you want to connect with your own grandparents or you want to connect with, with other beings um, around, around the world, whether it's animals um, or other types of beings, right? And it's really about understanding how to kind of like communicate between the, these uh, dimensional realms. And, and you're more than capable of doing that. It's just doing that practice, right? And so one of the easiest ways is, is to just start asking, you know, in your space, especially um, in your home, in your yard, in, in the areas you frequent in your community, you know, if you start to have that awareness, and, and so often our periphery, our peripheral vision is stronger than our direct vision, 
right? So our peripheral vision will, will say something like, oh, I see something over there. It's almost like if you, uh, like you can feel that someone's like looking at you, um, but you don't actually see them yet, you know? And, and so if you're feeling like there's someone over there, um, and remember too, so often we'll like whip around and look directly at that and then, uh, you know, it's not there anymore. Well, guess what? It's because it's in a different realm, right? We can't see it directly. Our peripheral vision is actually stronger. So if you are sensing something over there, just like take a breath and pause. And remember too, like so much, um, you know, the, the other beings act very similar to us. If someone all of a sudden whips around and glares at you, how many times you're like, mm -hmm, I'm going to go somewhere else, right? <laughs> oh, that was serious, right? But if um, you kind of like start to like sense that out and then maybe you see them a few times and then you're like, okay, today, today I'm going to go talk to that person, right? Um, so, you know, think about how you would want to be treated and, and do your best to treat others the same because that's go that's what's going to have the positive response, right? If someone comes up to you and says nicely, like, hey, I'd really like to work with you. You seem so wonderful. I like your energy. Is there an opportunity for us to collaborate? That has a significantly different response than someone coming in and being like, hey, you, you better work with me. I demand it. <laughs> And so I want you to start thinking about um, uh, how how you how you would like others to connect with you because we we have that curiosity we have that in, insightfulness we have that desire um, to better understand those around us without necessarily needing to have that right? I don't need these earrings. I just like them. I love them. I want to have them, right? Um, and, and so understand that in your communication, you don't need to have relationships with these beings in different realms, but they're nice to have. Um, and so like an example of that is I have all kinds of like little gnomes and fairies and um, ba basically anything you can think of is like folklore, right? I have several um, like, and I, I, I try not to like give them names unless they tell me their names. And more often than not, we talk in, um, they'll, they'll tell me like a very real name. So like, I, I know one of our most recent episodes, we talked with Lolita, the hummingbird. And so uh, like for me, and if you're ever saying, <laughs> if I meet you and I save your number in my phone, it's the same way. So it's like your name and then like an identifier, right? And so Lolita Hummingbird comes in, right? She told me her name's Lolita and she's a hummingbird. That's how I identify her. Um, but most of the times with um, the fairies, the fairies especially, I, I have a lot of fairy energy around my home. They live in like the plants that I have and things like that. Um, I'm not always like so, because we, we live in, in coherence certainly, but they don't really want to talk to me all the time. It's almost like having a roommate. You don't want to talk to your roommate all the time. And so um, I, I just more generally call them the helpers, right? Because I'm not worried. You know, I'm, I'm not enveloped in their their day to day. I'm there to, to do my thing. And I really genuinely appreciate their help. But uh, it's like because we live in this cohesion, right? And um, it's really exciting. It's really exciting because I know that they can do things that I can't do and I can do things that they can't do. So we, um, you know, it's this energy of whoever that job is easiest for does that job, right? And so they help out with, with a lot of the stuff in, in more minor energies. And I tell people a lot, it's like dusting, right? Dust comes up, you don't really know. Like, of course, we know where it comes from, but like you have to always dust your house and it's not that like you showed up one day and made a big mess, like dust shows up when, when nothing has disturbed it, right? And so the, the fairies are very similar. They do what I like to call like energetic dusting. They care for a lot of the, the minor energies around the house to keep the space really clean and healthy and beautiful. 
Uh, and to be honest, I like they, as much as they can tell me how they're doing that and what they're doing, I wouldn't know how to do that so um, intimately. It's almost like, um, you know, I, I have a car. I get the idea of how the car works, but really I just know how to use it. I, I couldn't like go be a mechanic and, and do stuff on the, on the car. <laughs> um, but certainly I can do other things, right? <laughs> and so it's uh, to a degree understanding that we each have like these roles and responsibilities and in working together as a whole, that's when everything gets met. Um, and so even so, that's the message from Grandma right now is to really do a good job of um, doing your work the best that you can, doing your work how it's supposed to be done and really focusing on, on your role and your duties. And simultaneously, um, accepting support from others to do their best at their duties, right? Um, let your mechanic be the best mechanic they can be. Let your fairies be the best fairies they can be. And you, in my case, I'm going to be the best oracle I can be, right? And it's so exciting because, like, together, then we have, like, all of our needs met as a community. And, and that also goes back to these identities, right? me identifying as an oracle allows me to do my best at that, right? If I showed up and tried to pretend like I was a mechanic, things would go very not well. They would not go well. And, and of course, I could learn things and be a better mechanic and all of that. But at the end of the day, I have no interest in being a mechanic. So like, I'm never going to be good at that because I don't want to do that. And so remember to follow those desires because those desires are leading you on your path of greatness. They are leading you in the direction uh, of the best option for you and trust your desires. There's so much trust in this work uh, because the more that you trust, the more that you are able to embody your own self, your own version of you so much better. Ooh, okay, my throat's getting dry. Mm. I love these, but when I talk so much, I have to take care of myself. Oh my goodness. That's, and I know this came up in another one, but um, just like that reiteration from grandma to really take good care of yourself, to take good care of your body, to take good care of your mind and your soul and your heart. Um, and, and it can be as simple as drinking more water, but also maybe, you know, you, you follow your bliss a little bit more. Um, or a lot bit more. Follow it a hell of a lot more. Go do your thing, right? No one's stopping you but yourself. It's so important to realize that, like, you are really, and if anyone ever shows up and they're like, oh, I have blocks, I'm like, no, you don't. You're your own block, okay? No, you don't. You just need to. <laughs> and, um, you know, even in that saying, no, you don't, right? That's that's such, like, a ingrained thing and, and so I know I, I keep talking about this story with my grandmother um, and I, um, so I've woken up I see my dead grandma and I'm like whoa this is cool but freaky and I remember like going uh, like getting out of bed and going upstairs my parents were watching tv um, and being like mom, uh, like grandma just showed up. Grandma Benson just showed up. It's fucking weird. <laughs> and she's like telling me all this stuff. And I was like, it was really nice, but like, also like, what the fuck is going on? Right. <laughs> and I remember my, my mom, um, and, and my grandma was still like, she, she went upstairs with me. We're like going to mom, like talking to her, like, I need a second opinion here. I'm fucking six. What is happening? Right. And, um, and I think that's such a good place to be in too, is if you're like, what is happening? Let's go ask ourselves, um, better, deeper questions, um, and, and keep learning. Right. Cause, uh, uh the, the first kind of step is to just have that obser observation, right? You just want to spend some time observing, you know, I, I'm sensing an energy over here. Okay. Start asking yourself some questions. What does it look like? What does it feel like? You know, what, what are the, the senses that are coming through? And I, I 
almost before you even say things like, what does it look like? You know, something more general, like I'm just going to take a breath and observe for a second. Um, because I honestly, I get a lot of smells coming through. I'm a very smelling, perfuming person. And, um, and I think it's kind of funny because like in, in my day-to-day -day life, I'm, I'm not especially perceptive to smells, um, but I, I very much so have a lot of strong smells come through when I'm doing intuitive work. And um, that uh, gives me a lot of information. And so probably you have certain senses that are stronger for you while you're observing these, um, these experiences. And also to, to remember if you're like trying to, you know, kind of jam it into the hole, if you're trying to make it work or, or do it this way, sometimes there's another way that's like way better and easier, but you're focused so much on, on trying to direct exactly how it's supposed to be that you are missing out on all this other beautiful, um, this beautiful alternative because you are unwilling to experience something different. Um, so just kind of like allow, and I always like to think like water runs downhill, right? Like allow yourself the easiest path. Don't try to say it has to go this way or it has to go that way. Just like allow yourself the easiest path because then you can work in this like co-creative energy with the universe um, to allow things to, to bloom like a flower, right? It's, it's very subtle. We're not like trying to drastically shift everything. And, and I'm even looking outside right now and it's like the sound of snow, right? You can hardly hear snow falling where like rain is so, um, can be so loud. There's thunder and all of that. But oftentimes there's like just with snow, it's, it's very gentle. And, and that's a lot of what this energy is like. So try to um, open yourself up to that more gentle energy. And so I go upstairs and I'm telling my mom, you know, Grandma Benson showed up. She's talking to me. I'm trying to make sense of it. Like, do you know what's happening here? What is going on? Tell me more. And uh, my mom starts telling me that I'm imagining things. And I remember she was like, Grandma Benson is dead. She's dead. Like, my mom is like, you did not see her. She is dead. <laughs> and I remember being like, well, I know she's dead, but I'm still seeing her. So what the fuck? And I obviously I was sick if I didn't say what the fuck, but that was kind of like the vibe. And um, I remember I, I started crying because I felt like I was trying to communicate so clearly what I had seen and what I had been experiencing. And my mom just like was not perceptive to, to what I was saying at all. And I, I was crying because I was having a hard time communicating. And, um, and, and really, it wasn't that I was having a hard time communicating. It was that my mom was not open or perceptive to what I was saying in any way. And, um, uh, and so then I, you know, I started crying and my mom, uh, thought I was just mourning and she was, you know, she was nice, but she was basically like, yeah, I'm sorry. She's dead. I know you're sad. Go back to bed. And I was very much so certainly like sad that my, well, and honestly, I'll, I'll be real. I, I did not, at that time in my life, I was a little six-year-old. I did not really fully understand death. So like, I knew that my grandma had died and I knew that other people were sad, but I didn't really understand all those nuances. And I also wasn't all that sad because I, like, I knew that my grandma didn't have a physical body anymore. But I was like actively talking to my grandma for years in her spiritual form. And so I did not, was not able to conceptualize at that time that grandma was gone because grandma didn't go anywhere. She just showed up differently, right? <laughs> and, and if anything, when I was, in, it, when my grandma was in the physical form, you know, I had to go over and see her at her house. I didn't 
I wasn't constantly in communication with her. But now that she had passed on, I just had to think of my grandma and, hey, there she was coming right on in. And so I had so much more access to her, if anything, after she had passed away. Um, and, and so it really just started um, th this, uh, th this seed of understanding in, in this experience that um, my mom was like not listening to me, my mom was not aware, and that there were things that were happening that my mom either didn't know or couldn't talk about. Um, and, and again, you know, I'm, I'm like about six years old. So like none of this really made sense as an adult looking back on it. I can think very differently about that situation, but in the time I, I was just like, you're crazy. Like, how do you not know this? I was like, she's standing right here. She came upstairs with me. What? She's here. She ain't dead. <laughs> and, um, so she is doing this clicking sound. She's saying, get back to it. It's time. It's time. And, um, and, and the, the reminder here is so much that, um, if you are looking for that external validation, it, and, and it is, I do think it's very helpful to talk with others about our experiences and, and to kind of compare notes to, to help kind of make sense of what we're seeing and what we think. But at the end of the day, you are the only person who has that awareness, who had that experience. And so if someone else is telling you no, or they aren't seeing it, or you're misunderstanding in some way, whether you are a child or an adult, have that in your mind that, you know, if you know, if you know wholeheartedly that you saw or experienced something, trust yourself more than what someone else is saying about your experience, right? Because they, they weren't there. They don't know. Um, and, and they might also just not have that awareness yet. They might not be able to see that yet. And so this is also where um, if you can seek out someone who does this work more often, they'll probably be able to guide you better about what, what occurred, what you're seeing and things like that, because it's not uncommon for us to have visits from, from our ancestors, visits from our family members who have passed on, visits from pets who have passed on, et cetera, et cetera. Um, but then also other beings, right? Other beings have also shown up and you don't necessarily know them already so it's like a new connection to you right it's almost like if you go to a networking event and you meet 10 new people those those are just new people to you and so remember that that can happen as well uh, especially once you kind of get this down like new new spirits will come in um, so don't try and identify them right off the bat and that's where I also really like saying things um, along the lines of this is like that. This is a person who does um, because if you and I will say, like, even if you're just looking around at other people in your community, you're never going to fully understand them 100 percent. You're never going to feel all the nuances and all, all of the the being and the ways that they act wholeheartedly. And so uh, what I want you to really understand well is that um, there is your, that, that will also be reflected in the spirits that you're meeting and encountering. You're never going to fully understand them. So the more that you can give them avenues to tell you um, in your understanding what they're like, it allows you to understand it better, right? And so if, if I were to say, you know, this being is coming in um, and I might say that they have a, a cone-like hat, like a witch's hat, and they wear um, this dark purple color and it's, it's sort of like a dress or a cape, you know, you, you can start to, to see and put together the image in your mind while also knowing that it is completely unique, it's completely different than anything you've ever experienced before. And so in just trying to figure out 
and and you don't have to figure anything out really but it, it is helpful to um to better understand when you start to have this curiosity of asking questions like that so overarchingly keep your mind open um really trust yourself to to have that communication with yourself and, and know that what you are seeing is real it is coming to you um, for purpose to to help you and to communicate in some way even if that's just to provide some comfort and love and connection to to the wider realms and outside of that um, ancestors are such good folks to to include and, and to try and connect with if you're starting out on this journey um, because they are uh, they do share that bloodline with you they do care about you they are in your corner um, and to really wholeheartedly be yourself and to identify and not that you have to identify um, specifically with a word who you are um, but uh, identify with, with your inner knowing with your inner feelings identify with your own joys and desires knowing that those will change and shift and also that sometimes that's just leading you to a place where you can get to the real thing right um, so especially if you're very far away from a destination um, or uh, a way of feeling, right? Know that you can go kind of through these stepping stones to really get to, to the full fruition of your goal. I am so happy you all joined us today. Um, I think that's about our time. Definitely please um, sign up for the email list if you haven't. I'm so excited. It is the holiday season and we'll be sharing some giveaways there and some, uh, you know, seasonal gratitude in that way. Um, there will be one more video on this series of five. If you didn't catch the, the others, go take a look at those. They're pretty fun. We talked to um, my, my grandfather, uh, Lolita the Hummingbird and my pet cat Figaro from as a child and we'll do one more in this set and then we'll we'll do something new um ask alicia live is always on the third wednesdays at 6 p.m uh 6 p.m pacific time third wednesdays of the month um coming up we're talking about intuitive skills and then we've got a couple psychic mediums and then in march we're doing money magic where we're really talking about the magic of currency and um, i'm so excited we'll be joined for that one with melissa gutierrez of happy labs and uh, the website is rosecode.co um, my instagram handle is ali rose 359 that's probably where i'm the most active um, and also join that mailing list because you'll see where i'm at in person and um, kind of get some of those more insider development. So with that, I'm so grateful for all of you. Thank you for joining. I'm Alicia Rose and just sending you lots of love. And thank you so much to Grandma Benson for joining us. Uh, she tells, she wants everyone to know that if they are working on their stuff and they want to have a connection and, and they're just looking um, to develop their skills, she is on board and she is in full support. Um, and if you like, just uh, give her a little mental call and stay open. You got to stay open for her to respond. Um, but she says that she'll come in and she'll respond to you to help you build and grow your own skills in that way. Um, she's saying about how she was such a psychic and in her time, she really um, couldn't tell people so much because she uh, she says it, it wasn't um, it wasn't appropriate. <laughs> and, uh, she very much so so grew up in a time where where women were much more um uh put down and, and thought of as property and um and not not so much as as sovereign beings and so she wants to remind you that you are a sovereign being and she also is telling me to tell you one last story um she got locked in the garage. I don't know how, why she couldn't get out, but she was locked in the garage. Oh, she says, cause she had lupus. So she had a really hard time with fine motor skills. And so she had gone into the garage and, and she couldn't get out. And uh, she, she was a Baptist 
uh, but she she's so funny. She goes, but I wasn't really one. That's just how I connected. Uh, so so do you know that like even if you you think you know someone is so something that might just be you know an outer facade that isn't necessarily fully aligned with their inner selves um and so she's talking um and and she says that she's saying to god in the garage for, for hours hours and hours she was locked in the garage um she said someone like went to work for you know like a general work day eight ten hours or something like that and um and they didn't come home till way later and she, so she was locked in the garage and she said it was dark um and she says this is where she uh was able to connect so strongly with the spirit realm and so she wants to to remind us you know if um if we do feel like we are in a sticky situation or something that is not um, so great, it's cold, it's dark and whatnot, to really um, allow ourselves to, to ask where that connection exists because sometimes we are given opportunities of quiet coldness to light our own fire. And, and she's speaking to the nature. I, I know I had said it's snowing today. It's the first snow of the season. And, and in the winter time or in the dead of night, um, we often think of the, these shadows as things to be fearful of. But the reality is that those are the greatest opportunities to grow and develop. And so please use those um, with that shining light, knowing that uh, everything is, is for your greatest good. Every little piece of this experience has meaning and purpose and good behind it. It's simply about uh, giving ourselves uh, the blessing of the opportunities that come to us. So never hesitate to, to reach out, to connect. She's telling us the spirit realm is always around us. They always want to connect to us. And, and it's that reminder that we have to use our own free will to, to make that connection. So with that, so much love to you all. And thank you, thank you, thank you.